All right, I'm hoping today is going to be a fun video. We're gonna do some exploring, we're gonna do some building with this. We have the LiPulse 12.8 volt 15 amp battery. But what am I gonna do with that? Well, I had an idea, and so I bought some other stuff. This is what's next. All right, I do want to state before I begin that this was provided by the vendor, but all the opinions are my own and no one has reviewed the video before it was posted. Um, now, this particular battery, I was hesitant at first to accept it. Uh, the reason for that was, what do I do with a smaller battery like this? You know, I mean, I was looking on here and it said ride on toys, small UPS, power wheels, scooters, that sort of thing. Well, I don't have any of that. I do have solar power. But then that got me thinking. I was like, well, maybe, you know, these other pieces here might play a role into this. And I thought portable power station, kind of build my own. Now, I am not going to build the whole thing today. But before we do that, we want to unbox this. We're going to test the capacity of this battery, which should be roughly, what, 190 some odd watts uh, is the capacity. Now, that's not what we're going to pull from this. But we're going to uh, at least... You know, at that point, then go to these pieces and parts that I did by myself. So any of these pieces and parts that you see, I did purchase those. So anyways, packaging wise, it is nice. I mean, it's small. It's a battery. It's tiny. Um, you know, it's showing wheelchair, tent, solar. On the side here is all the stats for this particular product. Uh, you got 12.8 volts, 15 amps, 192 watt hours. Cells are cylindrical, so on and so forth. Here's some additional information in regards to the BMS that's on here. So we have overcharge protection, overcurrent protection, over discharge protection, low voltage cutoff, high temp cutoff, and short circuit protection. Sorry, I don't go into that many details, but we will test obviously low voltage cutoff during our power test. Here's some additional tips that are located here on the side. And then we're back to the front. So I am excited to get this thing open. So I'm going to find my magic knife. And I'm not sure why I called it my magic knife. But uh, here it is. Get this thing open. Let's see what this looks like. It should look like a battery, I hope. All right. So we have a little bit of foam here. Looks like we have a product manual, which I will look at that off camera. And then we have the battery itself, which is packaged in this nice little plastic bag. And you'll see that we have some F2 terminal connectors here. And let's go ahead and get this opened. All right, took a little bit of work with the knife to get that undone, but we got it undone. I'm gonna go ahead and let's see what, um, what volts we're currently sitting at here with this unit. So we're currently sitting at 13.2 volts already in this battery. So really before we move on to uh, putting together this portable power station using all those fun accessories, what I wanna do is I wanna get this charged up and then we're gonna do a discharge of the battery to find out what the total capacity is of this. Again, it's rated for 192 watt hours. I'm gonna guess that we're gonna be a little less because we're using DC only on my project, probably gonna hopefully get the longest battery runtime out of this lithium iron phosphate deep cycle battery. I'm gonna to return tomorrow after we get this thing charged up. All right, I have successfully, with this little AC to DC power adapter, recharged our battery here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this unplugged. And then we're going to safely remove our alligator clips like so. Okay. Now, before we get started with testing, which we're going to be using this today, uh, I did go through this manual and I did, or it says product manual, went through it. Uh, it's all color. It's decent. There's not a lot of text. It's very easy to get through this document and understand most of it uh, that's in here. I mean, some of these stats, I'm gonna be honest, I am not a battery expert by any means, but I got an idea of how this is supposed to work. Anyway, with that being said, I, I wanted to bring that up today. Now we're using this device here, which should allow me to get an idea of the actual capacity. Again, this is 192 watts. Now that's 
not the usable amount. What is the percentage of actual usage of this battery? So let me go ahead and I'm gonna get these connected up. All right, we have the battery connected. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. And we're gonna get this thing started. We are running 12.8 volts at three amps. So that's roughly 36 to 40 watts of what we're gonna use. Currently right now we've used 1.4 watts out of this a runtime and the actual capacity at 11 amps. So there you go. We're just gonna let this run and then we'll return back to see what our total available power is with this battery. All right, after running this test for two hours and 12 minutes, we extracted 202.02 watt hours out of this battery. That is a 105% as this is a 192 watt hour battery. So with that in mind, now the next thing is, is let's have some fun with this. And I need to get this charge back up again. Uh, so it's probably gonna be a couple days and we'll start kind of building this, what do I wanna say, DC charger thing. We'll be back in just a moment. We have some initial information on how well this battery performs. We obviously get more than 192 watt hours. I've been wrong all along because I'm thinking a traditional power station. But speaking of which, that's what I want to build. So in the prior sections, I mentioned something about having, you know, these pieces that I bought. Now, since I started this video, I've made some changes. So in essence, here's what we're going to do. We are going to take these two terminals here and I'm going to put a splitter on them. So we're going to have two F2 connections. One of those connections is going to go to this DC 12 volt marine battery and USB port that I purchased, although we're going to do a test here shortly. The other thing that we're going to do is we're going to use one of these cables because it has this type of connection on the back which we can then route to either that AC charger that charged this battery or something else that I picked up recently, which is based, um, a solar charger from Renogy. Super inexpensive. So obviously you have the cost of the battery, you have the cost of the cabling, you have the cost of the outputs, but what else do I need to make this work? We have this field box. Water resistant seal, it says. Of course, I'm gonna be putting holes in this thing. But what I wanna do before I get going with this, because I am still waiting for the splitters for the F2 connectors, we're gonna do a simple test of just the DC connection to make certain that everything works. All right, I've already done a test. All I have here is some electrical tape. These two connections are basically the same um, width as this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead, I'm gonna tack on this first thing. I've never done this before. I'm literally going flying by the seat of my pants. And if we can get this to stick down and then this one here is on. And so at least that way it's not on perfectly, but it'll be fine. And bada bing, bada boom. Won't you look at that? 13.3 volts. That's right. We have a voltmeter and this is USB quick charge 3.0 and a PD charger USB-C. And then we have the marine or old cigarette lighter. And so there you go. We got those two. Let's do a test. Now, I know some of you that are watching this probably know this way better than I do, but I get giddy when I can create my own stuff. And that's what's going to make this fun when I add the box to it. But all right, simple test. Again, we're showing 3.3 volts and or 13.3 volts and if i plug this in we should see this starting to charge and there we go it is now charging okay now what if we add uh something to the dc port here all right in a prior video i did this carplay screen uh, i have the dc plugged in i'm seeing the light so if i plug this in here so not only am i charging my iPad, but I'm also charging or using the CarPlay all from this adapter. So from that test, I'm gonna consider that a success. 
uh, we have power that's working. Now, like I said, the problem that we're having right now, and yeah, that just went out because this connection's loose, but um, we just need to figure out, again, how is this all gonna fit in this box? So I stopped by Menards and I picked up this, I think it was $6, $5.98. We have 11 and a half inches wide, so that's this length here. And then we have seven and one eighth inches tall, and then a depth of five uh, one eighth inch wide. Now, if we take this off, and part of the reason why I like this is because, you know, it's a sturdy little thing. And it does have a rubber gasket that goes around here. So yes, it could water seal itself. Of course, if I'm gonna be putting anything in here, I'm gonna have to seal it up. Cool thing about this is this battery, look at that, goes right in like that. Um, I'm thinking of putting it closer to the edge, although I might put a spacer in there. Um, and then that'll allow me to have some spots here on the side where I can put this right about here, if that makes any sense. And then on the, either the top or the back, I'm not really sure how I want to do this yet. It could be from back here. I'm going to have the output of one of the cables that's in this bag. So I can either charge this via AC or I could charge it via solar. So at least that's the thought. But you know what? I think that's a project for another day. Let's take it back to the studios for my final thoughts. Okay, it's just a battery, but it is a battery that did perform well in my testing. As my experience is more with those AC-DC power stations, I forget that these lithium iron phosphate batteries generally eke out a bit more energy than what it's rated. To pull 202 watts from a 192 watt hour battery, this bodes well for the type of cells that they're using, so thumbs up there. You might find this a good battery replacement for those toy car kids ride on uh, scooters, home lighting, power gates, and even UPS devices. But the question you might be asking yourself, which I know I was asking myself, is why? Why did I offer to review this? Well, I see the potential for future Hey What's Next projects. This battery's small form factor is honestly, it's great. So that's why I decided to toy around with the idea of building a DC power station. For those who are interested, I am going to post an episode that goes through the process in finalizing that power station build that we kind of hinted in today's episode. So stay tuned for that. If you're interested, I have a link to the battery in the description. Well, that's a wrap for today. If you found this episode helpful, take a moment to click the thumbs up icon and the subscribe button. Uh, to watch another episode, you can either click here or here. And until next time, I'm gonna see you again for another episode of Hey, What's Next?